Well, unabashed coattail riding loser Scottie Pippen continues to lash out and be totally ungrateful to Michael Jordan for all that he did for Pippen's overrated legacy. Scotty has recently announced a no bull tour throughout Australia with a duo of scrubs, Luke Longley and Horace Grant, who in 28 total seasons in the NBA combined to make one cumulative all-star appearance. What a tandem for Pippen to team up with. Together, the three jealous, petulant, 50-something-year-old babies will awkwardly sob on stage together about the unfair treatment they received from the Last Dance docuseries, which highlighted the legendary exploits of Michael Jordan dragging the bloated carcasses of his overrated teammates to a sixth and final championship in 1998. The backlash by Pippen highlights one of the many revisionist garbage narratives percolating around that Bulls dynasty and Michael Jordan's career in general. That he never won without Pippen. As if Jordan played an extensive career in the NBA without him. Jordan was drafted in 1984, while Pippen was drafted in 1987. That left a three-year sample for Jordan without Pippen. Jordan's rookie season, his second season, in which he played only 18 games because he broke his foot, thus resulting in essentially a non-season, and then his third season. And in just his rookie year, Jordan would explode onto the scene in the NBA, averaging 28.2 points per game, 6.5 rebounds, 6 assists, and 2.5 steals on 51.5% shooting from the field. He was third in points per game that season, while scoring the most total points in the league and ranking very highly in a number of advanced stat categories, finishing second in the NBA in PER second in value over replacement, second in box plus minus, and second in win shares. Second in all of those categories, by the way, to Larry Bird, who was that season's league MVP. This was Jordan's rookie season. He would then suffer the aforementioned broken foot in season two and missed 64 games, which brings us to his third and final season without Scottie Pippen, the 1986-87 league year. When in his aged 23 year, Jordan produced one of the greatest individual seasons in league history, dropping preposterous per game averages of 37.1 points, 5.2 rebounds, 4.6 assists, 2.9 steals, and 1.5 and blocks. The 37 points per game that year easily led the league in scoring for that season by over 8 points per game that is, but it was also the 4th highest single season scoring average ever behind only 3 other seasons all produced by of course Will Chamberlain. Despite this ludicrous stat line and the fact he led the league in PER, VORP, BPM, and win shares, he somehow only finished second in league MVP voting. But a source of intense criticism for Jordan over this three-year span is that he lost in the first round of the playoffs and he needed Scottie Pippen. But in the first round in Jordan's second and third seasons in the league, he played the Boston Celtics both years. You know, the dynastic Larry Bird 1980s Celtics, including one of the best teams ever assembled in 1985-86, a year, by the way, that Jordan played them. Yeah, that season, Boston won 67 games, had league MVP Larry Bird, and boasted a roster of players that would include five eventual Hall of Famers. Yeah, Jordan lost to that team in back-to-back -back seasons at the age of 22 and 23. Oh, and remember how LeBron took a massive steaming dump in his pants at the age of 22 in his fourth season in the NBA against the Spurs when he scored just 22 points per game in a four-game sweep on 35.5% shooting? It's a complete crap. Yeah, this was nothing like that. 
In 85-86, 22-year-old Jordan averaged 44 points per game, 6.3 rebounds, 5.7 assists on 15.5% shooting in a performance that prompted that season's league MVP and eventual NBA champion Larry Bird to call 22-year-old second year in the NBA Michael Jordan a god. The next season in the 1987 playoffs against the same Celtics team, Jordan would average only a meager 36 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists per game. Yeah, clearly he needed Scottie Pippen. Or just any other single competent fringe all-star level teammate as Jordan's best player in those first three seasons was Charles Oakley, who dropped a career scoring average of 9.7 points per game while being named an All-Star one single time in his entire 19-year career. A year, mind you, he did not play with Michael Jordan. Anyway, that guy was MJ's second best player when he was in his early 20s, and he actually gets criticism for not beating a team with five Hall of Famers on it. But luckily for Mike, his savior was drafted in 1987. And Scottie Pippen, just like Jordan, came in and started dominating the league immediately. Eh, I'm sorry, your time's run out. No, 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 they didn't. No, that didn't happen at all. In Pippen's rookie season, he was barely a factor at all, averaging 7.9 points per game, 3.8 rebounds, and 2.8 assists. Meanwhile, that very same season, coincidentally, Jordan was named first-team All-NBA, first-team All-NBA defense, league MVP, defensive player of the year, oh, and led the league in scoring and steals, while playing in all 82 games and leading the league in minutes per game at 40.4, while dropping an eye-popping line of 35 points, 5.5 rebounds, 6 assists on 53.5% from the field. And it is still the only time in organized professional basketball history a defensive player of the year also led the NBA in scoring. Unfortunately for Jordan, right as the legendary 80s Celtics were finally in decline, this season would mark the ascension of another historically great team. It would be the start of a three-year stretch where Jordan would run up against the Detroit Pistons, three years in a row from the 1988 to 1990 postseasons. A Pistons team that had three Hall of Famers on it in Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars, Dennis Rodman, and also Bill Lambeer, who while not in the Hall yet, is a 2024 nominee, which would make it four Hall of Famers on this team. A team that went to three straight finals and won back-to-back -back titles. And in the 89-90 playoffs, Jordan lost in the Eastern Conference Finals to this team in six and seven games, while the Pistons would then go on to dominate the finals both seasons, sweeping the Lakers in 89 and beating the Trailblazers in five games in 1990. Two teams Jordan would beat over the next few seasons for his first and second titles. If only he had more help early on, who knows how many more championships Jordan would have had. Alas, all he had was bum-ass scrub Scottie Pippen, who in the Eastern Conference Finals Series against Detroit in 1989 was able to contribute 9.7 points per game, 7.3 rebounds, and 3 assists, while Jordan easily led the team in scoring with per-game averages in this series of 29.7 points per game, 5.5 rebounds, 6.5 assists. The next year, in 1990, the Bulls would push the defending champion Pistons to a seventh game in the Eastern Conference Finals. In that Game 7, Jordan had 31 points, 8 rebounds, and 9 assists. While his savior that he needed to win all of these championships, Scottie Pippen, scored 2 points on 1 of 10 shooting in 42 minutes played. Oh, what a loser! Man, thank God Mike had Pippen to carry him to all of those rings. But finally, by the age of 25, Pippen was ready to stop crapping in his panties every year in the playoffs and provide Jordan a viable second option. And accordingly, Jordan would win three consecutive championships. In those 58 postseason games over that span of time, from 1991 to 1993, Pippen was good, averaging 20.3 points per game, 8.2 rebounds, 6.1 assists, and 2.1 steals on 47.8% shooting. 
while Jordan in those three playoff runs, also in 58 games, where he not only won three finals MVPs, but also was easily the best player in every round of the playoffs, produced per game averages of 33.7 points, 6.4 rebounds, 6.6 assists, and 2.1 steals on 49.7% shooting from the field. After the three-peat, Jordan would retire to pursue a career in baseball and Scottie Pippen would get a crack at being the lead dog in the 1993-94 season. A season many stipulate that Pippen proved his individual greatness. And no doubt, it was his best individual season, posting a line of 22 points per game, 8.7 rebounds, and 5.6 assists, while finishing 4th in league-wide player efficiency rating, 5th in value over replacement, and 9th in win shares. He would lead the Bulls to the 7th best record in the NBA and into the playoffs as the 3rd seed in the Eastern Conference, losing in the 2nd round of the playoffs and displaying such sterling leadership skills like refusing to re-enter a game and pouting on the bench after Phil Jackson drew up a final shot for Tony Kukoc instead of Pippen. A shot Kukoc would make, by the way. Jordan, of course, would return the next season, and the Bulls would, of course, go on to win three more consecutive titles with him leading the way, while Pippen was in pure regression mode for the second three-peat, averaging just 17.6 points per game on 40.8% shooting in 58 playoff games during the 1996 to 1999 playoffs, while Jordan would be averaging 31.4 points per game over that same stretch. And in 1998, the subject of the Last Dance docuseries, the floor really dropped out for Pippen and the other scrubs Jordan was carrying, uh, I mean playing with, at the time. And this was particularly the case in the NBA Finals round. As amid a series of back issues, Pippen would score only 6 points on 2 of 16 shooting in Game 5, and in Game 6, he would manage only 8 points in 25 minutes. Tony Kukoc was the second leading scorer for the Bulls in that Game 6 closeout with only 15 points and he would be the only Bulls player to score in double digits besides Jordan, who had 45 points, and legendarily, the steal to set up his own game-winning shot. Thank God for these elite teammates. Overall, in 17 seasons, Scottie Pippen averaged 16.1 points, 6.4 rebounds, and 5.2 assists per game while making 7 All-Star appearances and being named First Team All-NBA 3 times. For comparison, this is Chris Bosh's 13-year NBA averages for a career where he was selected as an All-Star 11 times. And while no one is saying Chris Bosh is better than Scottie Pippen, Bosh was closer to Pippen than Pippen is to Jordan. And yet Pippen was named as a top 50 player all time. This guy should get down on his hands and knees and give daily thanks and praise that he was lucky enough to be the one serviceable all-star that got to ride Jordan's coattails. Instead, though, he will be taking his bum ass on a no-bull tour around Australia, slandering the greatest player of all time with his other fellow scrubs.